Topic is normalization. It belongs to database management systems offered in MCA semester 3. The agenda for today's lecture is we will have a recap of the types of keys that we have studied till now and functional dependencies, the informal design guidelines for relational databases, normalization, first normal form, certain update assemblies, second normal form and then we will summarize the whole lecture. To have a recap of the keys, we studied earlier that the keys are like super key, candidate key, primary keys, alternate keys and foreign keys. Now, what is a super key? Super key is an attribute or a set of attributes that can uniquely identify any entity in an entity set. So, a super key has a property of uniqueness. It means that no two tuples will have the same value for that attribute or set of attributes. So those set of attributes are called super keys. Now if K is a super key of a relational variable R, if K is a super key, means K is an attribute or a set of attributes in any relation R and A is an attribute of R then K implies A. It does not have the irreducibility property. It means that it can contain a subset that has the uniqueness property. Super key is unique but there may be a subset of super key that is also a super key. So, super key is not reduce, is reducible. So, it is unique and also it is reducible. So, you can reduce super key into some subset of super key that is again a super key. is also a super key but this super key is unique as well as it is irreducible. So super key is unique as well as reducible whereas a candidate key is unique and irreducible. It means that a candidate key is a super key which has the uniqueness attribute and like super key and since it is a super key no double, two doubles can have same values for that super key. It is irreducible means no subset of a candidate key can be a super key. It means that a super key whose at, uh, subsets are not super keys is called a candidate key. So candidate key has two properties of uniqueness and irreducibility. That is why we say that candidate key is the minimal super key. When we say minimal super key it means that it is a super key and no subset of this super key is a super key in itself. Coming to the next key, let us take an example. Customer number, customer street and customer former, super key. Also customer number is another super key. So in this relation, there are two super keys. One, customer number and customer street combination. Another is customer number. So we have two super keys in, in this relation. 
So these both are properties of the relation customer. It means that this combination will remain unique for all the customers. Similarly, customer number will be unique for each customer. No two or more customers will have the same customer number. Therefore, it is unique. So, it is a super key. As well as, if you observe that, no subset of it is a super key. Now, let us see whether any subset of these super keys is a super key. Let us take first example. Customer number and customer street. Here, customer number is a super key. So, one of the subsets of customer number and customer street, that is the customer number is a super key in itself. I repeat, in this relation customer, there are two super keys. One, customer number and customer street. Two, customer number. Now let us check one by one that which super key has a subset which is a super key. In first example, there are two possible subsets of customer number and customer street combination. Let us take the first subset, customer number. Is it a super key? Yes, it is a super key. As we know that customer number is a super key. Is customer street alone a super key? No, it is not because many customers can have same street values. So, one of the subsets of this super key is a super key in itself. Therefore, this super key can not be a candidate key because it is unique but it is also reducible. We can reduce this super key into customer number into a super key. So this is not a super key. Coming to customer number, customer number is unique as well as it is irreducible. You cannot reduce it in, into any subset that is a super key in itself. So these two are super keys. This is not a super key. This is not a this, uh, this is not a candidate key and this is a candidate key. So the candidate key is the minimal super key. So it is a super key and then no subset of it is a super key. So here only customer number is a candidate key. Now primary key, alternate key and foreign keys. In a relation variable has two or more candidate keys as we saw in the previous example, there were more than one candidate keys. In such a case, one must be chosen to be the primary key. So out of those more than one, when we have more than one candidate keys, only one has to be chosen as the primary key. So the one that is chosen is called the primary key and the rest of the candidate keys is called our alternate keys. So, out of all candidate keys existing in a relation R, one is chosen as the primary key and all other candidate keys are alternate keys. Now, what is a foreign key? A foreign key is a set of attributes of some relation variable R2 whose values are required to match the values of some candidate key of some relation variable R1. 
So, if I say that attribute A is a foreign key in relation R to okay, then there must be some relation R1 in which say an attribute B is a candidate key. Now, the value of the foreign key A in R2 can have only those values which are present in the attribute in the candidate attribute B of R1. So, a foreign key attribute can hold the values only if they are present in their related candidate key attributes of the table R1. So, the foreign key attributes can hold either null or those values only which are present in the candidate key of the other table. Coming to functional dependencies. Let R be a relation and X and Y be the subsets of the attributes of R. X determines Y says that Y is functionally dependent on X. So this is the functional dependency existing between X and Y. Which means that Y's value is dependent on the value of X. Or we can say that X functionally determines Y. So this is the functional dependency existing between X and Y. X determines Y or Y is dependent on X. So X is the determinant and Y is the dependent. So functional dependency is a many to one relationship from one set of attribute to another within a given relation. If the value of x determines a unique value for y. So functional dependency between x and y holds if whenever there are two numbers that have the same value of x will also have the same value of y. In other words, we may also say that if t1x is equal to t2x here T1 is a double, T2 is another double. So T1 and T2 are two different doubles. T1x means the value of X in T1 and T2x means the value of X in T2. So when the value of X in both T1 and T2 are same, then the value of y in both the tuples is also the same. This is called x determines y. Now let us learn certain informal design guidelines for relation databases. Now how should we go about designing relations? We know the entities, we understand the attributes that identify those entities, we know the relations that exist between the entities. So we know the name of the relations, we know the attributes that are to be stored in the database, but how to design it, how to create a good database design? What all attributes should fall into one relation? What other attributes should fall into another relation? There should be certain guidelines to design a good relational database. So relational database design is the grouping of attributes to form a good relation schemes. Now, 
It means that the attributes should be grouped in such a way that the whole relational database design can help us access the information is an easy and efficient way. So there are two levels of relational schemas. There is a user view we know and another is the base relation level. So when we are talking about designing of the database, it is obvious that design is always concerned with the base relations. So we are now concerned about designing the base relations and not the user view. Now let us learn some of the guidelines that will help us design a good relational database. So informally, each tuple in a relation should represent one entity. We know that we reduce when we draw when we drew entity relationship model, we reduce the entities into relations. And therefore, each tuple of a relation represents an entity. So, first point that we should note is attributes of different entities should not be mixed in the same relation. If there are two entities, one customer, another is account. So the attributes of customer may be customer number, customer name, customer city, customer's mobile number and the attributes of an account may be account number, balance in the account. So we should not mix all these attributes into one relation. We should not form a relation which holds the attributes like customer number, customer name, customer city, customer's email, customer's account number and the balance in the account. This should not be done. This should be avoided for a good database design. So, attribute of different entities should not be mixed in the same relation. They should be kept separate. If customer is an entity, all the attributes belonging specifically to a customer should be kept in the table customer and the attributes of account should be stored or are defined as the attribute of another relation account. Now for example, employee code, employee name, department number, department name and department location. If this is a relation where employee code is the code number of an employee, EMP name is the name of the employee, DPTNO is the department number, department name and department location. So as we can see that employee code and employee name and probably the department number belongs to employee. But department number, department name and department location these are the attributes identifying a department and employee and department are two different entity sets. So this is not a good relational database. This is, this is not a good design. Number two, only the foreign keys should be used to refer other entities. Number three, entity and relationship attributes should be kept apart as much as possible. There are certain cases in which the relationships has also got their own attributes. In such cases, entity and relationship attributes should be kept apart. They should not be grouped into a single relational design. Guideline two. Design a scheme that does not suffer from the insertion, deletion and update anomalies. If there are any anomalies present, then note them so that application
decisions can be made to take them into account. Now, while we design a database, we should keep in mind that when the data is actually entered, the desire should be made in such a way that insertion is easy, insertion is possible, deletion is also easy, and update is also easy. So, we should take care about insertion, deletion, and update anomalies while designing a database. A database or a relational schema should be free from these three anomalies. Another guideline says the relation should be designed such that their doubles will have a few null values. Attributes that are null, they frequently could be placed in separate relations. So, design the database in such a way that their doubles will have few null values, as few as possible. Because null values give, does not give a clear idea about the values, that why they are null. The reasons for being null can be many. The attributes or what not applicable or invalid. For example, when we store the data about an employee, we write the employee number, employee code, employee name, employee city, and in, e in the column email address, we may leave it blank. Now, that null does not clarify that why it is null. Either it was not applicable or the employee did not have an email address or it was left blank by mistake. So what are the reasons for null? Either the attribute is not applicable or it is invalid, the attribute value is unknown and it, but it may exist. And third that value is known to exist but it is unavailable. We knew that the employee has an email address, but the address was not available at the time of entry. So, while designing relations, we should avoid the tuples which have few null values. The fourth guideline says, the relations should be designed for lossless joint condition. So, every relation should satisfy lossless joint condition. When the relations are decomposed and when the relations are joined, joining of these relations should not lose any information. So the relations should be designed in such a way that when we join two or more relations, no information should be lost. So this is lossless join. So on joining relations, no information is lost, is to be ensured. And no spurious tuples should be generated by doing a natural join of any relations. Now, in the case of natural join, when we join two relations, there is a possibility of some spurious tuples, some extra tuples that get generated which were not existing in any of the relations earlier. So, we should avoid two things. One, there should be no loss of information and there should be no spurious tuple. Coming to normalization. Now, what is normalization and why do we need it? Normalization is the formal process for deciding which attributes should be grouped together. Now when we learn the guidelines of a good database design, the issue was how to decide that which attributes will fall into which relations. Now here, normalization is the formal process with the help of which we can decide that how the attributes should be grouped together in order to form a good database design.
So we will normalize our relations. We will go through the process one by one. It provides us with a systematic and scientific process for grouping the attributes together. So it is based upon certain criteria, certain rules, dependencies, etc. to form a good database design. Normalization serves as a tool for validating and improving the logical design so that the logical design satisfies certain constraints and avoids unnecessary duplication of data. So after we normalize our relations on the basis of certain constraints, functional dependencies, this normalized relation will avoid some unnecessary duplication of data. What is the process of normalization? In the process of normalization, we actually analyze and decompose the complex relations into much simpler relations and transform them into smaller, simpler and well-structured relations. It serves as a tool for validating and improving the logical design so that the logical design satisfies certain constraints and avoids unnecessary duplication of data. And this simplified form will again, it's repeated that the smaller, simplified and well-structured relation will improve our logical design. It was first developed by E.F. Codd. Normalization process consists of various steps and these are called normal forms. So there are many steps to normalization and a normal form is a state of a table that results from applying simple rules. So we apply certain rules on our complex tables based upon which we decompose them into smaller, simpler and well-structured relations. So a normal form is a state of a table that results from applying simple rules regarding functional dependencies to that table. Based upon, how do we decompose this? How do we decompose these complex relations? We do it on the basis of functional dependencies that exist in that table. So we have a complex table and there are certain functional dependencies existing in that table. Based upon those existing functional dependencies, we will apply certain rules and decompose them into simpler, smaller and well-structured small tables. So each normal form is built upon the last and functions as both a process and a criteria. So we have initially a complex relation. We apply certain rules on it and decompose into smaller relations. They are simple and smaller. So this goes to next step of normal form. Again there might be some anomalies in that normal form. So we apply some other rules on functional, based on functional dependencies and we get another, go to another normal form. Therefore we say that each next normal form each normal form is built upon the last, the previous one and functions as both a process and a criteria. Now, again coming to a good database design. To achieve a good relational database, one approach is to design schemes that are in appropriate normal form. So, if a relation is in some normal form, it will give you a good database design. So, the purpose of normalization is developing a good database design and based upon it, which create the normal form. A good database design aims at removing the following undesirable properties. In a good database design, 
We do not have these properties. We do not want the repetition of data, repetition of information in any relation. So, a normal form for a good database design removes this repetition of data. Number two, inability to represent certain information. This is another drawback. When we design a database, it should help us insert all information that we wish to store about the entities, about the enterprise. So, when we design a database, we should take care that all our relations should be able to represent certain information. Third one is loss of information. We decompose the relation, we join the relation, we perform so many operations on the relations. But in any case, we should not lose any information. So if the database design is good, there will be no loss of information. Therefore, normal forms help us achieve this good database design. So a good database design avoids repetition, inability to represent certain information and loss of information. So, if a database is good, design is good, then there will be no repetition. It will be able to represent all information and also there will be no loss of information. But then let us take an example. We need to store data about suppliers, supplier number, name, status and city. We also wish to store data about parts, part number, name, color, weight, city, city where the part is located. So SP, storing the supplier number, part number and the quantity in which the part is being supplied by the supplier number. Here supplier number, part number and quantity means the particular supplier is supplying this part in such and such quantity. So to, in order to store the data about supplier parts and the quantity in which the part is supplied by customer, we will see whether this is a good relation design or not. Now, again I repeat, the normalization is a process of decomposing unsatisfactory bad relations by breaking their attributes into smaller relations. What is a normal form? It is a condition using keys and functional dependencies of a relation to certify whether a relation schema is in a particular normal form or not. The normal forms that are based on primary keys are 1NF, 2NF and 3NF. It is 1st NF, 2nd NF and 3rd NF. First normal form. A relational variable R is said to be in first normal form if and only if all underlying domains contain a domain variable values only. So if any relation R is in first normal form only if each and every attribute of that relation contains atomic values only. When we say atomic, it means that the values should not be composite. They should be atomic values. So the definition says that a relation R is in first normal form if and only if all underlying domains contain atomic values only. Which means that the relation if it is in first normal form, this is the first step of normalization. So if a relation is in first normal form, it is said to be normalized relation. 
It will not allow composite attributes. It will not allow multi-valued attributes. It will not allow nested relations, which means that the attributes whose values for an individual tuple are non-atomic. So non-atomic values are not allowed. So the values, each and every value of the attribute should be atomic. Now, let us see whether this relation is in first normal form or not. And if it is in first normal form, we will see what are the difficulties in inserting, deleting and updating the information. Let us take the example of a relation R which has five attributes, supplier number, city of the supplier, status of the supplier, the part number which the supplier supplies and the quantity in which the part is supplied by the supplier. So each tuple of this relation represents the supplier code, the city and the status of the city, the part number supplied and the quantity in which the part is supplied. Now this is a design of the relation R. Now let us see whether it is in first normal form or not. So to be in first normal form, all its attributes should hold atomic values. Let us see supplier number. Supplier number is a atomic value. City, again this attribute is not composite. It is not multivalued. And it is not, so it is atomic. Status is again atomic. Part number is also atomic and quantity is also atomic. So all these attributes are atomic attributes. The domains are atomic. They are not, none of them is composite or multivalent. Therefore, this relation is in first normal form. But now let us see, is it difficult to add, insert and update or it is easy to do so? So we will check each and every normal form on we'll check the anomalies existing. We will see whether there is some insertion anomaly or delete anomaly or update anomaly. Because our objective is to remove repetition. The first objective is to remove repetition, to remove any information loss and the table should be able to store any type of information. There were three things. One, there should be no repetition. There should be no loss of information. And third is that the relation should be able to store any type of information. To check that this is valid or this relation satisfies these three things, we will check the insert, delete and update anomalies. So let us see that this relation which is in 1NF does it satisfy the condition that we are looking for. Now let us see. At a first glance it is very much visible that there is a lot of repetition here. As we can clearly see, S1 stays in London and the status of London is 20. So one thing that we can see clearly is that the city of the supplier S1 is repeatedly being stored. Similarly, the city of supplier 2 is Paris and the information that supplier S2 resides in Paris is appearing twice. So, the information that supplier stays in London 
appears six times. The information that S2 resides in Paris appears two times. S4 resides in London appears three times. So this is a repetition of information. Apart from this, the status of London is 20 appears 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 times. So there is a repetition of information. The status of Paris is 10 appears 3 times. So at first instance, if we look at the data, in the data, in the, the possible data in this design is the repetition issue. Now one by one, let us see if there is some insert Now, carefully look at the data stored in all these attributes. First of all, the attribute supplier number denotes the code number of the supplier and the part number denotes the part being supplied by the supplier. So, the key value in this relation is Supplier number and part number combination. So supplier number and part number attributes are combined together to form the key attribute of this relation. When it is a key attribute, it cannot hold null values. So none of the attributes supplier number and part number can have null values. So let us note it first. Now, if this is the relational database design, can we add a supplier which has not supplied any part yet? If a new supplier's supplier, say S5, wants to register in order to supply some part, but yet he has not supplied any part. And if this is my database design, can I add the details of a supplier in this table? Say S5 is the new supplier, so I can write the value of number as S5. He may be residing in London, so I can say London is the city. Then 20 is the status, but since he has not supplied any part yet, I will have to leave part number and quantity null. But since S number and part number are primary key attributes, this number, part number cannot be left blank. It should not, it cannot have null value. Now since it is not possible, it is not possible for me to enter any supplier which has not supplied any part yet. So here we find the insertion anomaly exists. Here you cannot add any supplier if it does not exist. Apart from this, can we add information about a city and its status. Now, to add the status of say Athens, I'll just have the value of the city Athens and maybe the status of Athens is 30. But since no supplier resides in Athens, I cannot add this information into it. Because in that case, supplier number and part number and quantity will be null. And since supplier number and part number are key attributes, they cannot have null values. So with this type of design, I cannot store the information of a city and its status unless it's, it is Unless some supplier resides in that city and supplies some part. So this was the insertion element.
which we could find in this relation in this design. Let us see if there is some delete and anomaly. Now, for example, if we delete part P2, if we do not need part P2, we would wish to delete all those tuples which consists of part P2. Suppose I don't want part I don't want part P2 anymore. I don't want anybody to supply part P2. In that case, if I delete all those tuples in which P2 exists like this and this. So here, here it is we have P2, 1, P2, P2, P2. So we will delete all the tuples which contains P2 in part number. Now let us see what happens if we delete all these four tuples. We delete second tuple. We delete this tuple S2 Paris 10 P2. We also delete S3 Paris P2. And we also delete S4 London Paris P2. Now observe carefully that when I delete this tuple, let us see that S3 supplier S3 was supplying only P2. And because he was supplying P2, his data was entered into this tuple that S3 is the supplier, stays in Paris, status of Paris is 10. There was only single tuple in the table which contains information about S3. So when we delete all the tuples in which part number is P2, there is no problem if I delete this tuple. There is no problem if I delete this tuple. There is no problem if I delete this tuple. But if I if this tuple gets deleted, we will lose the information of supplier S3. We will lose the information that S3 resides in Paris and the status of Paris is 10. So the details of supplier S3 are lost because of deletion of the tuples having P2. This is a deletion anomaly that we face in this particular database design. So we know that we have to avoid such designs. So we are checking for each and every anomaly that whether this is satisfied or not. Coming to the updated anomaly. Now, is this some problem that exists when we update the data? Let us check. Now, if we change the city of S1, then suppose we will have to make changes in number of tuples. If supplier S1 has shifted from London to Rome, I will have to change all these values in all these tuples because the information that S1 resides in London exists in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, these 6 tuples. So at 6 places I will have to make changes. Now if S1 shifts from London to um, to some other city, say Athens, then London will have to be changed to Athens at six places. This is, let us take another example. If the status of Paris changes from 10 to 30, so I will have to make changes in number of tuples 1, 2, and 3. So it is again the update anomaly. So we have seen that this database design 
although it is in first normal form, has insert, delete, and update anomalies. It is difficult or it is time consuming to update the data. If we delete some data, there are possibilities of information loss. There is a lot of uh, repetition and also it is difficult to add certain information into this normal form. Now, in order to improve this design, we will see how, why these problems have come. The reasons for such anomalies can be determined and solved using the functional dependencies that exist in such relations. So functional dependencies existing in this relation will help us improve the design of this database. So this database is in first normal form but there are certain anomalies. In order to remove these anomalies we will look at the functional dependencies that are the reasons for these anomalies and then we will refine this normal form. Now let us see why these anomalies were, were present. The functional dependencies that exist in this design are supplier number and part number determines quantity or quantity is dependent on supplier number and part number. You can see that the quantity 200 is dependent upon S4 and P2. S4 supplies P2 in quantity 200. So S number and part number determines quantity. You can very well see that the combination of supplier number and part number Whenever they are same, the quantity will also be same. So this is one dependency that exists. Another dependency that exists here is supplier number determines city. Supplier number determines city. Means whenever the supplier number is same, the name of the city will also be the same. Let us check if it is so. Wherever we have S1, the city is always London. So, the value of the city depends upon the number, the supplier number. Another example, wherever it is S2, we have Paris. So, whenever it proves that, whenever the value of S number is same, city is also same. Here S1 is the same, it was all random over here. Whenever S2 is 2 are same in tuples, we will have Paris. Whenever we have S4, we have London. So for same similar values of supplier number, the value of the city is also the same. Therefore, supplier number determines city. This is the reason that whenever the supplier number is written in the tuples, we have to write the city. Now with this database design, when we store supplier number, city, status, part number and quantity all into one database, into one relation, as many times we store the supplier, so many times we will have to store the city also. So here, this is one of the functional dependencies. Then, another functional dependency exists between city and status. Whenever the city is same, the status will also be the same. So status depends on city. Let us check whether it is right or not. Status of London is 20. So, whenever we have London, we have 20. Wherever we have London, we have 20. You can see. London, 20. London, 20. London, 20. London, 20. 20. For all pair of tuples when we see, whenever the values of city are same, their status will also be the same. 
Here Paris, Paris, ten, ten. Paris, Paris, ten, ten. So the value of status depends on the city. This is again another functional dependency that exists in this database design. The fourth one is supplier number determines status. So we can easily make out that whenever we have same supplier number, the status will be same. When the supplier number is same, it is S2, the status is also same. When the supplier number is same, here S2 is S4, the status is also the same. The supplier number determines status also. So these are the four functional dependencies that exist in this database design. Now, with the help of these dependencies, we will improve, we will apply certain rules on this normal form to improve this normal form into a better one. This is called second normal form. A relation schema is in second normal form if and only if it is in first normal form and if every non-prime attribute A in R is fully functionally dependent on the primary key. So, we know what are the prime attributes. Prime attributes is any attribute that is a member of the primary key and full functional dependency means a functional dependency Y determines Z where removal of any attribute from Y means the functional dependency does not hold anymore. We will continue with second normal form in the next lecture. This is the bibliography. These are the books that you can refer for studying normalization. Thank you.